Mayor Adams decides he's going to solve his immigration problem by suing the bus companies that are actually transporting the migrants from Texas into New York, saying that they're responsible for $700 million in damages. In his new executive order, of course, he was also threatening the bus drivers, saying that if you bring them in, we could charge you with a misdemeanor for just doing your job. And I don't know how this is going to be held constitutional because we have the Commerce Clause and interstate commerce that allows us to transport things. And there's very broad rules against these types of things. But who cares? The Constitution doesn't matter. Matter, and the immigration problem is not the border problem. It's not the federal government's problem. It's not Texas's problem. It's not anybody else's problem other than Greg Abbott's, who is doing this diabolical behavior, as he'll say, and also the bus drivers and the bus companies. Now, this is this guy, proud of this activity, suing the companies, not upset about the government, but about the people doing the transporting in New York. New York City has and will continue to do our part to manage this humanitarian crisis, but we cannot bear the course of reckless political pl from the state of Texas alone. Today, our administration filed a lawsuit against 17 companies that have taken part in Texas Governor Greg Abbott's scheme to transport tens of thousands of migrants to New York City so the companies. in an attempt to overwhelm our social services system. These companies- You said that you were a sanctuary city, that everybody can come, that everybody else is racist. So now they're there pursuant to your requests and now you're blaming Greg Abbott? have violated state law by not paying the cost of caring for these migrants. And that's why we are suing to recoup approximately $700 million <laughs> already spent to care for migrants bus Whoa. here in the last two years by the state of Texas. Governor Abbott's continuing use of migrants as political pawns is not only chaotic. They want to go there. They want to go to the Big Apple. They want to come be a part of this historic new life in America that your party promises them. And inhumane, but makes clear he puts power politics over people. Today's lawsuit should serve as a warning to all those who break the law in this way. If you bring migrants to our sanctuary city, we're going to sue you for $700 million. All right, this is insane, obviously. I think these lawsuits will probably be dismissed pretty rapidly, but here's what's happening. You can see he actually posted this January 4th over officially on the nyc.gov website. He says, under New York social services law, companies that intentionally transport people will be sued. New York City Mayor Adams announced this. He says 33,000 migrants to New York City without having the companies pay for the cost of care. They're responsible for this now. And we heard his little stupid speech. But here's what the lawsuit says. Not even long or complicated. It is the Supreme Court of the state of New York is where they're filing this. And remember, in New York, that is the first level court. Here, the commissioner of New York, which is Mayor Adams, suing all of these private companies who are just literally doing their job, right? These are just companies who have bus companies. And so now they're all going to be responsible into the federal immigration company. A problem because of this guy. So Buckeye coach, right? Carduan Tours, Classic Elegance coach. He's 17 of them. You're all sued. How dare you? How dare you do this? Bring immigrants that they want and where they want to go freely into the location where they want to go. So they want it to literally be everybody else's problem except theirs. All right. Here's the statement of the case. They say, okay, in April 2022, Greg Abbott, he announced a plan where Texas is going to bus migrants to relieve its overwhelmed border towns. No, sorry, Texas. You have to deal with it on your own. And promised Texas we would continue to these transports until there's a change in immigration policy at the southern border. Now, as part of this plan, Texas governor directed the Texas Division of Emergency Management to arrange for the defendants, the bus companies, to provide the transportation out of Texas. Now, the bus companies, their implementation of the governor's plan is not part of a human-centered initiative to help individuals vindicate a constitutional right to travel. They say, no, this is not about their right to travel. Pretty sure they ask them where they want to go. Here are your options. Can't stay here, obviously. So where do you want to go? Chicago sounds pretty good. New York sounds pretty good. Okay, many people going to California sounds pretty good because there's hubs there. Ooh, that's where all my friends are going. That's where I know to go. Okay, so I'll see you there. Perfect. We'll help you get there. It's free, man. Just get on the bus. Sign these forms. Get on the bus. Do you want to go back to Mexico? No. Okay. Do you want to sleep here on the streets in the middle of nowhere? No. Okay. You want to get on a bus and go to New York? They say they want you there. Okay. Here you go. Free bus tickets. Come on. So they get the free bus ticket. Now they say, nor is their implementation of the Texas, which sounds pretty human centered to me. I mean, it's like literally like a free pass into the interior of the United States. Federal government's not having to pay for that, supposedly. So nor is their implementation of the governor's plan protected by that case which struck down another statute that criminalized the transport into their state in a private car of a driver's brother-in-law who needed public benefits. And so stripped to its essentials, they say, you know, other case law supports us, which we'll see, I doubt that. The Texas governor's publicly articulated plan, which the defendants here, the bus drivers, have knowingly implemented, is to shift to New York City and other urban areas the traditional cost of migration at the southern border. Yes, we're out of, we don't have any more resources, man. That they wake up to the reality that the border policies are failed 
policies. Yeah. And you know, there's some serious concern that when they come, they come because they are incentivized to come because there are locations in this country that say, come on in, we'll pay for your healthcare now, like California's doing. So of course that's going to cause the carrot that causes people to come. So the traditional costs have been borne by the Southern states like Texas, Arizona for a while. Now it's time for you who have requested them to also join in on the fund. As of November, the defendants, the bus companies, they've earned millions of dollars in revenues from Texas from following Abbott's plan. And to earn this revenue, they've transported people to urban areas like Chicago, DC. We really should, a lot more should go to DC. I mean, honestly, like 80%. I know they don't want to go there probably, but it'd be nice. Right on Nancy Pelosi's front door. Philadelphia and Denver, right? is where they're going. Now on December 29th, the Texas governor announced the results of this implementation plan. He said, so far we've been busing tens of thousands of individuals to sanctuary cities, what he calls, including 33,000 to New York. Now the defendants have also sent 28,000 to Chicago, 12,500 to DC. It's a good start, but I mean, that number, we got to bump those numbers up, man. Come on. 1,300 to Denver, 3,400 to Philly, and 1,300 to LA. Now New York has a law to address this conduct. We've got a social services law that any person who knowingly brings somebody who's needy from out of state for the purpose of making him a public charge, that's not the purpose. They want to go there. They shall be obligated to convey such person out of state and support him at his own expense. That's not what's happening. So in his lawsuit, in this lawsuit, New York is seeking payment from the bus companies to deal with these costs. Now as construed in 19th century case law, when we had more sane immigration policies, that class, they say here, we had a statute that addresses bad faith implementation of these rules. Now this implementation protects individuals who are carriers of passengers who are within the letter, but not within the spirit of the act. And there's common carrier protections as well, right? Bad faith here, they say, so we say this is bad faith. They are receiving more, more for their services than it would cost to buy a one-way ticket. So they say, according to the public reporting, the bus companies are getting $1,650 per person. Okay, so they're really jacking the costs on that. They go, oh, this is a government contract. This is work that we really don't want to do. Jack the price. Yeah, it's cost of doing business. You know, I guess federal government won't take care of it. Got to have private companies do it. They can jack it up. You know, it's free market at work there, I guess. But until the cities buy their own buses, that's another solution right there. Or maybe nonprofits or something, you know, anyways. Anyways, we'll figure the bus situation out. Or plane tickets, buy plane tickets too. That's the next solution. In fact, that's probably cheaper now that I think about it, right? 1650 per person, probably just cheaper to get plane tickets, but maybe that's the new the new plan. So regardless, you see chartered buses, they, they've done the math on this. They say this should cost $291 and they're charging 1650. So they're getting a windfall. They're exploiting these people. In implementing this bad faith plan, there can be no doubt that the bus companies are liable for the costs of at least tens of thousands of individuals that have already been transported into our state. Now the cost of providing the care for at least 33,000 people is $708 million. As further evidence of their bad faith, certain of the defendants are now evading or assisting others in evading the requirements of New York. Mayor Adams also just passed this new executive order that said it's illegal if you try to bring people in. And he said, I'm going to charge you with misdemeanor crimes if you do it. And, and he narrowly tailored, and he's going to say, the drop off points and he's restricting people's movements and all this between certain hours and certain locations and blah, blah, blah. Now, within days of this issuance, rather than comply, certain defendants have begun to discharge individuals outside of New York City. <laughs> <laughs> They're just dropping them off in different locations. On information or belief, they just give them a one-way public fare to travel into New York City in order to seek shelter. So they'll drop them off in New Jersey and just say, hey, just hop on the subway over there and just uh, get over there to New York. <laughs> <laughs> now, New York is seeking an injunction to preliminarily and permanently enjoin the bus companies, and they want costs. Now, this is in New York, okay, which of course is a rigged, uh, you know, I was gonna say country, which is not, you know, not far off, so far removed from anything else that we see in this country. But, you know, it's going to their people. So it's going to their, their bureaucracy that's also irritated with this. So what are they gonna do? So here are the parties. They say plaintiff is commissioner of New York. We got Buckeye, all the busing companies. We see all them there. All of them charter people. Here, they're just giving us a list of all of them, Roadrunner Charter, okay, out of Texas. And here they say from April, 33,000 people have come in. Here's our cause of action. They implemented this plan and here's our prayer for relief. We want $700 million, pay New York City for the cost of caring for all these people. And so all these companies should be bankrupted and eliminated for helping migrants travel around this country, exercising their freedom to travel. They're asylum seekers, man. You want them to stay in Texas?
Texas in the streets. So Stephen Banks wrote this and on behalf of New York. And so this is, you know, what they submitted suing the bus companies because they'd rather blame the bus companies than anybody other than, well, the federal government, you know, who's ultimately responsible for this insane failure. And it's very racist opinion too, by the way. It's like, it's like, it's almost like they don't want migrants in their city, which is racist, man. I mean, so here, this is Alejandro Mayorkas, the guy responsible for this in addition to Joe Biden. He's getting beat up about this pretty badly on CBS because he's totally incompetent or maybe he's competent and this is exactly what they want to do. Whether it's because they don't actually control the border, whether it's because they're planning some sort of mass amnesty event, whether it's because they want a subclass of people, whether it's because they want the second order effects, you know, like these people will be here and then they'll have children and then those kids will be citizens and then they'll vote, you know, like so they're thinking, you know, 18 years down the line or whatever. There's a lot going on here and CBS is even asking questions that he has a difficult time answering. Senators in the White House about a bill on that side of the chamber. The House has already passed something. So what I'm really asking you here is, would you change the law? Do you support changes to the law to reduce the flow? And I'll give you specifics that Republicans want on the table. They want the standard for allowing a person to come across the border in between ports of entry, illegally is the word for it, and wait here. They want that standard to be higher. Right now, it's just credible fear. They want it to be more likely than, than not you'd be allowed to stay. I think you know the reality is most people who cross the border and uh, claim asylum, the vast majority do not actually receive asylum. And then they're just here. So will you change the standard at the border as a matter of law? There are bipartisan negotiations ongoing now. Republican and Democratic senators are at the table to discuss how the broken immigration system should be fixed. I am privileged to be a part of those discussions and provide technical and operational advice to those senators Nothing. who are totally focused on solutions. This is all about solutions, not making the problem worse by taking away the funding that our public servants rely on to do their work in the service of the American public. So he says absolutely nothing there. Just I'm involved, there's stuff going on and I'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. We're having very nice conversations about it. But as we mentioned, this is what's happening. This came over from Viral News NYC, who's been doing great reporting on this issue. I encourage a follow to him. He says, more groups of migrants arrive at Penn Station. They made their way from Texas on buses to New Jersey. Then they took the train over. I was told around 300 migrants arrived in total. While New York City officials state the migrant crisis is unsustainable, this new route is taken to avoid the executive orders. As you can see here, just a bunch of people just kind of piling in. They get dropped off. Hey, here's you know a bus ticket. Go on in over here. Hop on. And then boom, they arrive right in New York City. And then there they are. So very interesting there. We also had this story from Kareen. Kareen gets asked about this. You know, Kareen, a lot of people have some concerns about this, even on the Democratic side. Do you have anything to say about this? You said this was kind of normal. A couple weeks ago, you had said what we're seeing at the border isn't unusual. But in the month of December, there were more than 302,000 migrant encounters, uh, the highest total for a single month ever reported. So does the administration concede that what we're seeing now is unusual? What I said was, to be exact, is that what we're seeing at the U.S. is is, uh, is, is ebbs and flows in how many migrants arrive at the border. It's something that happens every year. It ebbs and flows. Uh, and it's fueled by uh, efforts of smugglers to encourage irregular migration. And uh, I will add, since uh, since uh, May 12th, DHS has, has removed folks who have, been, uh, who have been here illegally, who were not here on a legal basis, about 460,000 people that they've been able to remove. That's what I said. Every year we see an ebbs and flow, and that's Ebb what we're flow. seeing at this time, and which is caused by misinformation uh, from and disinformation from smugglers. Okay, smugglers, misinformation, and din disinformation from the smugglers. Maybe they should ban them from X, and then all this will solve all the problems, okay? Maybe the FBI should go in there and then just ban them. So, all right, this is what's happening. Rather than actually addressing the problem, New York City is suing the private companies. They're suing Texas. They don't want this to be anybody else's problem other than the Texas problem, L like legitimately. It's like your problem. It's the border state's problem, and we know that that is not going to work out well in the long run for Texas. And so, we'll see how this continues to play out as we cover this. Thanks for subscribing, my friends. We'll see you here on the next one.